Oh, yeah, you want to Okay, I am told that we are live. Welcome, everyone, to this uh, April 7th, 2021 meeting of the Board of Directors of Long Point Region Conservation Authority. I will now call the meeting to order. And uh, the first thing I have to do, I'm told, is to read this statement. Okay, board members, staff, guests, and members of the public are advised that this meeting is being video, audio, audio recorded, and live streamed through the LPRCA YouTube channel. As such, comments and opinions expressed may be published and any comments expressed by individual board members, guests and the general public are their own comments and do not represent the opinions or comments of the authority and or the Long Point Region Conservation Authority Board of Directors. The recorder, recorded video of the full authority meeting is not considered the official record of the meeting. The official record of the full meeting shall consist solely of the minutes approved by the full authority. Okay. That's the second time I've had to read that. So perhaps it's uh, something new that's come down the pipe from the Ontario government or Conservation Ontario. I don't know. Before I move on, though, I do have a card here that was uh, provided to uh, the authority here at headquarters. And it's a little note of thanks. I will read it. It says, to all members of the Long Point Region Conservation Authority, a quick note to thank you for the jacket you so generously gave me for my time served. It will, ser it will serve as a reminder of the many years and memories created. Your thoughtfulness was appreciated. Roger Geisens. Okay, so that's from Roger. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Roger. Very nice. Very nice to receive that. Mm -hmm. Hope you're doing well in his uh, retirement from board duties and other duties. Are there any additional agenda items with respect to today's meeting? Yes, Peter. I'd like to discuss a potential, um, yeah, I'm not sure what you want to call it, a, a suggestion that came up as part of our Southwest Oxford Council meeting yesterday about the possibility of um, loaning some day passes through the library system. Loaning day passes to our parks, is that it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, uh, that's correct. Okay. I've got a note here. We can add that a motion that the LPRCA Board of Directors adds. Where's the clerk? Can you help me there, uh, Madam Clerk? Uh, day pass, uh, LPRCA day pass loan to the library. Day pass loan under two. To the library, just your library, or you want it to all the libraries, Peter? Well, if we're going to have the discussion, that's fine. Um, the suggestion was just, you know, a, a small handful, uh, maybe a couple in Tilsonburg, possibly a couple in Mount Elgin. And I don't know if there would be interest in going into, say, Simcoe, Port Dover, a few other uh, centers, just to generate interest in the in the uh, conservation areas. Okay, so it's. The motion will read that the LPRCA Board of Directors adds day pass to the libraries under, we got to find uh, where we should put it, Madam Clerk. Uh, where would you like to put that, Madam Clerk? New business item G, 9G, would that fit? Okay, as item 9G to the April 7th, 2021 agenda. That's moved by Peter. Seconder, Valerie. Okay, got that, Madam Clerk? Good. Those in favor? No one opposed? That's carried. Thank you. And uh, are there, is there any declaration of conflict of interest to declare with today's agenda? None noted. Minutes of the previous meeting. This is the annual general meeting of March 5th, 2021, pages one through to eight. Any uh, questions or discussion to be had with any of those items listed there? If not, we will move forward with that. Uh, pardon me, Dana. Okay, a mover and a seconder that the minutes of the LPRCA Board of Directors Annual General Meeting 
held March 5th, 2021, be adopted as circulated. I'll move it. John Cholton is the mover, seconded by Peter. Those in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Is there any business arising from the previous minutes? I don't see any hands up or anything. Review of committee minutes, there are none. Uh, there's no correspondence in the agenda package. We, moving on to development applications, and I will call on uh, Ben Hody to uh, go through the first uh, package here, pages nine through to 17. Ben. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> there are 27 staff approved applications that are being brought before the board for information. Um, it has been a busy month. Uh, lake levels continue to be up and people are reacting to the uh, flooding and erosion that happened over the winter, uh, undertaking uh, shoreline protection works and raising the cottages. And there's a number of applications that have been, have been approved and reviewed for uh, to ensure that this went back to flooding and erosion and to ensure that the risk to flooding and risk to life and property from flooding and erosion is uh, minimized where possible. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer all, answer all your questions. Any questions for Ben with respect to any one of those 27 uh, applications? Don't see any. I just uh, want to make note that when you get that many applications, it sounds like there's a lot of economic activity taking place on the back roads of our watershed. A lot of building going on and people making infrastructure repairs. So it's actually the, the economy seems pretty strong despite the COVID. So no further uh, questions or discussion. <clears throat> I need a mover for this one that the LPRC Board of Directors receives the staff approved section 28 regulation applications report dated March 26, 2021 as information. Mover, Ian, seconded by by Tom. Mm -hmm. No further discussion? Those in favor? That's carried, thank you. And Ben, moving on to the next one. Go ahead. Thank you, thank you Mr. Chair. This is the report for the applications to be approved by the board. There are nine, nine applications before the board. Uh, <clears throat> the applications range from replacement of dwellings to doing some shoreline work and also placing fill. Again, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those questions. Any questions for Ben on these nine applications? No comments. I need a mover and a seconder for this one that the LPRCA Board of Directors approves the Section 28 Regulation Development Applications as per the staff report dated the 7th day of April, 2021. Mover. Moved by Dave. Stewart, mover, and Dave's the seconder. Those in favor? That is carried, thank you. Now we'll move to the general manager's report. Judy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So in the report, um, I was highlighting a couple of things that we had to do that were a result of the um, Conservation Authorities Act, the subsections that were added. So they were required to be completed by April 3rd, 2021. And this part related to um, reporting to the minister, um, Minister Yerrick, on the number of members of the board of directors. And if there was variance from the um, act on the number of people allowed by the population, um, either there's you can have order in council or there could be resolutions. And in our case, uh, the last change was in 2014 when we increased the board membership from 10 to 11. So we had all the paperwork and all the copies of the uh, resolutions here. So a letter was drafted and sent to Minister Yerrick um, before the deadline with all the supporting documents. The same uh, information is posted on our website. That was another requirement that it must be made public. Another requirement that um, we have to do is also provide draft minutes and they have to be um, made available to the public within 30 days. So um, 
there we're now posting our draft minutes on our website and they'll be available and sometimes before the the next board meeting depending on the timing so we've implemented those things to be compliant with the changes there are some changes required to our administrative bylaw and we're working through those and we'll be bringing a revised um, administrative bylaw for the board to consider um, i think that'll be coming in may and um, also in the report with the announcement today we um, We'll be able to continue with our seasonal camping. Um, however, it looks like we'll have to cancel our first five days of camping in May because our campgrounds open on May 1st with the uh, latest uh, stay at home order uh, for the lockdown. So we'll be working on that tomorrow to figure out uh, what we can and can't do. But um, looking at it, that looks like for sure there'll be no overnight camping until we're back open in the province. So other than that, uh, we're just working through. It's been a very busy uh, time for permits, as you can see, and the activity hasn't slowed down, so. Okay, any questions for the general manager? About a report? No? Well, we'll I need a mover for this one, a seconder that the LPRCA Board of Directors receives the general manager's report for March 2021 as information. A mover? I'll move it. John Schulten's the mover, Valerie's the seconder. Those in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Judy is going to give us this next report, and it's with respect to the, uh, the trailer, float trailer replacement purchase. Judy? Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, we did put a tender out uh, requesting quotes for a new float trailer. We uh, did not receive any um, bids back. So I asked um, Frank Scram, the workshop supervisor to contact um, the vendors directly and see if we could um, get some quotes. And we did receive one quote back before um, that we're able to put into the board report here. And we are um, looking to replace the float trailer and we'd like the board to consider the quote that we received from Miska Trailer. They have one that they were building and they would hold it till tomorrow, knowing that we had the board meeting um, tonight. It meets all our specifications. However, our capital budget was um, when I looked at pricing last fall, um, we put in 26,000. However, materials have gone up and the price of the trailer that's available uh, right now is 32,395. Uh, we're asking the board to also consider uh, approving a transfer from our uh, capital uh, levy reserve. So I guess the long and short of it is we have a trailer. I'd like to avoid having to safety it. Um, it is due for safety now and we do have some issues with the rod on the frame and it was purchased in 1998. Um, safeties on those large trailers can be very expensive. So knowing this is over but I think in the long run we would be better off um, if we're able to secure a new trailer. So I'll leave it up to the board for consideration. Discussion with respect to this item on the floor. Yes, Peter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Judy, um, is there any issues with the um, tendering process that we're going through or has there been um, issues in the past that we're not getting bids on our tenders or is this strictly a matter of shortage of supply and availability? Um, yeah, we haven't really had a problem before not receiving bids. I think in this case, um, it is a supply and demand issue and, um, and it's kind of a unique item. So it's not something that we normally are purchasing. Last one was purchased in 1998, but I think it's just um, a sign of the times too. And the, um, you know, there's been material costs increase. We know that steel prices have really increased um, since the fall. So I think this is just a one-time situation. 
Anybody else with a question? Don't see any hands up. So the motion reads that the LPRC Board of Directors received the 2021 Motor Pool Float Trailer Replacement Report as information and that the LPRCA Board of Directors approves the quote as submitted by Miska Trader Factory for $32,395, and that the LPRCA Board of Directors approves the transfer of $6,395 from the internally restricted capital levy reserve. No further discussion. Call the vote. Those are, uh, I need a mover and a seconder. Ian's the mover, seconded by Tom. Okay, those in favor? Those opposed, that is carried unanimously. Thank you. And I know a friend of mine, he uh, got some quotes to purchase a trailer, not one of this type, but he ended up going to MISCA as well. They were the, the cheapest of all the companies he went to. So probably a fairly competitive bid. And then we'll move on to Aaron to give us some reports. And the first one is the 2021 motor pool purchase of side-by-side uh, -side utility vehicles, Aaron. Thank you. Um, the authority issued a tender for two side-by-side -side UTVs. Uh, the tender was sent out to eight vendors. Um, we received two bids. Um, the acquisition of the two UTVs was approved through the 2020 capital budget for $16,000 per unit. Um, both of the submitted bids met or exceeded the requirements of the tender, and staff is recommending the board award the tender to Halnor Equipment for the acquisition of the Coyote Metron 2200 model for the unit price of 13500 each. Um, thank you. I'd be glad to answer any questions if there is by the board. Questions for Aaron? Yes, John. Uh, Aaron, I see here it says that the Coyote 2200 or 2240. Um, uh, is there a difference? Is that two models we're talking about, or is that one model? That's one model that came in in uh, oh, okay. uh, the guide with it. And the second question is Is our staff because I believe that uh, uh, we have a couple of coyotes already in service? Yeah, is our staff happy with those machines? I'll pass that over to Judy, she works closely with Frank. Judy. Um, through, through you, Mr. Chair, we only have Kubota, uh, Kubota um, UTVs working in the parks. We have a couple Coyote lawnmowers. Um, so this will be the first time for this type of vehicle, this model. Okay. Okay. Thank you. As Peter asked earlier, I'm surprised that there's only two bids for this type of equipment, being we got so many people in this business. Peter, you had a question? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I think this might be for Judy. Um, I'm wondering why we have to approve these things at board level if it's already been approved as part of the budget. If it meets all the specifications, why isn't this just done? Judy? Um, thank you, um, through you, Mr. Chair, to Peter. Uh, this has just traditionally been handled this way, taking the reports to the board for approval. Um, we are going to be updating the purchasing policy, and that's something that we could consider changing in the purchasing policy. And obviously, the board would approve the purchasing policy. So that's on our radar to bring to the board this year. So we'll consider that. But it, yeah, if um, that would be one way to do it for sure. Okay, go ahead, Peter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, it's not that I, I enjoy actually being able to go over some of these things, but I think we also need to empower our staff. And so long as we've approved the expenditure and everything falls within the guidelines, um, I think we really do need to uh, empower our staff to go ahead and make those decisions when necessary. So you're suggesting, Peter, the, the last one about the purchase of the trade or something like that should come to the, the meeting being it's over budget. I would agree with that, Mr. Chair, um, that those kind of expenditures do need to be explained. But uh, so long as it falls within an approved budget, I, uh, I don't know that we need to be micromanaging every decision. Judy didn't ask you to ask that question, did she? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thanks, Peter. <laughs> did I see another hand go up? 
Nope. Okay. A mover and seconder for this one that the LPRC Board of Directors accepts the tender submitted by Helnor Equipment for the purchase of two new side-by-side -side Coyote Mecron 2200 diesel utility vehicles for a unit price of $13,500 and a total price of $27,000 excluding HST. Mover, leader, seconded by Ian. Those in favor, that is carried. Thank you. And Aaron, you're on for the uh, next one here. Thanks. Um, so the authority issued a tender for one diesel lawnmower. Uh, we sent it out to six vendors. Uh, two ven two uh, vendors submitted bids uh, for the tender. Uh, both bids met or exceeded the requirements of the tender. Um, the low bid was submitted by Norfolk Tractor for the Kubota F2690 model. Um, the 2021 approved capital budget was for the amount of 23,000 and the low bid by Norfolk Tractor was 23,300. Staff is recommending the board award the tender to the low bidder Norfolk Tractor for $23,100 with the $300 difference transferred from internally restricted capital levy reserves. Uh, thank you. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions with respect to this uh, tractor purchase? Don't see any hands up. So move that the LPRC Board of Directors accepts the tender. Oh, that's the wrong one. Sorry. That the Board of Directors accepts the tender submitted by Norfolk Tractor for the purchase of one front mount riding mower, Kubota F2690 for $23,300, excluding HST and that the LPRC Board of Directors approves the transfer of $300 from the internally restricted capital levy reserve for the acquisition of the front mounted riding mower. Mover, Stewart's the mover, Valerie's the seconder. Those in favor, that is carried, thank you. And Aaron, you're going to speak with us about the next report, the septic disposal services tent. Thank you. Uh, so annually, the authority issues tenders for our septic services at the five campgrounds. Uh, this year, we received three bids. Um, the 2021 budget for septic services was approved at 95,000. And based on the low bid per park, projected amounts forecasted will be approximately $90,710. Um, staff is recommending the board award the tender for septic services at Bacchus, Deer Creek, and Norfolk to Bayside Septic for $140 per load and for Haldeman and Waterford North Conservation Authorities to Frankie's Pumping for $170 per load. Um, if there's any questions, I'd be glad to answer. Questions? And, uh, okay, did, did the price drop from a previous year, Aaron? Uh, yes, um, so the price increased for, um, Two for Haldeman and Waterford North by a dollar uh, fifty a load, and the price decreased for Bacchus, Deer Creek, and Norfolk four dollars a load over the previous year. Okay, thank you. Any questions or discussion to be had with that uh, septic item? The, the the one that I've kind of always signaled out here is the Haldeman one for fifty four thousand dollars. It seems like an awful lot of money. And I just wonder, uh, there was some problem with uh, water getting into the septic tank there. And the, there was more call outs by the, by the people that came to do the pumping, I remember. But Judy, can you bring us up to speed on why that would be so high, as, as high as $54,000? Um, through you, Ms. I mean, sorry, to answer your question, Mr. Chair, at Haldeman, uh, we have a lot of seasonal campers um, and also that number we have decreased it over the years it was much higher before um, we definitely have um, lowered the cost there we have done some repairs you're, you're right there are some um, tanks that probably are filling up in with you know some of the uh, piping underground but so we've 
we did a couple of things. We changed the, um, the the stick level so that it wasn't. It was alarming that it needed to be pumped sooner than what it needed. So we we addressed that on some of the tanks. We've done some repairs. I'm saying not saying that there's not a, more repairs that could be done, and also we fixed the. Um, we have a septic system on site. So I had Frank, uh, we needed to fix it with a, it's a chamber and then a pump into the, into the lines for the septic system. So we have that functioning. So we're also able to mitigate the cost by having the hauler just pump from the tanks into our septic bed. And that can take around six loads each time. So we're working with um, the hauler and this is a new hauler, which we'll be giving the new um, instructions to, but we do save the cost because they don't have to go off site. So there is a, a lower rate. So I think at one time we we're up around $90,000 on the septic charges. So it's, it's dropped a lot. Okay, thank you. Stuart, did, are you familiar with this system at all in Holloman? No, okay. So a mover and a seconder for this one that the 2021 contract for septic services at Peter, Bacchus. Peter's question. Oh, Peter, go ahead. Sorry, Sorry. Mr. Chair, just uh, by way of comparison, Judy, um, Haldeman uh, Conservation Area, how large is that compared to some of the others on that list? Um, just a The reason for my question, Mr. Chair, is that if it's comparable in size to some of the others, um, and we're looking at roughly double the amount of septic, then that would uh, equal some uh, investment dollars that could be spent in order to further improve the situation there. I see Judy's looking up some numbers there. Yeah, I thought I had the... Uh... So, yeah, we have a lot, we have over, we probably have about 110 seasonal sites there compared to the next largest would be uh, Norfolk at 86. Um, so the number fluctuates, but overall we have 150 seasonal campsites at Haldeman, but obviously they're not all full, but yeah, so it's a very large seasonal campsite. Mm -hmm. Okay, Peter. Now, what's that? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. So a mover and a seconder for this one that the uh, 2021 contract for septic services at Bacchus Conservation Area, Deer Creek Conservation Area, Norfolk Conservation Area be awarded to Bayside Septic Services 2012, Inc. And that the 2021 contract for septic services at Haldeman Conservation Area and Waterford North Conservation Area be awarded to Frankie's Pumping. Those in favor, or no, I need a mover and a seconder. Tom's the mover, Dave Barris is the seconder. Those in favor? That's carried, thank you. Our next report is the health and safety report. And uh, Judy, are you giving this one or is Aaron? Um, Mr. Chair, that's Aaron. Go ahead, Aaron. Thank you. Um, so the current health and safety policy was approved on February 4th, 2015, um, and it's included in the LPRCA personnel policy. Um, the policy is attached in attachment number one. Um, the LPRCA Joint Health and Safety Committee met on February 21st and approved the uh, Joint Health and Safety Terms of Reference, uh, attachment number two for the board's reference and information. Um, the Joint Health and Safety Committee also uh, recommended the attached standalone draft health and safety policy be presented to the board of directors for approval. Um, the, health, the, the health and safety policy as, prevent, uh, as presented fulfills the organization's requirements under the act. Um, and reflects management's commitment, support, and positive attitude towards the health and safety program and the protection of our workers. Um, the draft uh, 
health and safety policy is in attachment number three. Um, additionally, at the um, February meeting of the uh, Joint Health and Safety Committee, um, the revised and updated uh, inspection forms for the campgrounds and the administration building, uh, the incident report, uh, report form and the Joint Health and Safety Investigated, uh, Investigation Report form are attached for your information. Um, I believe uh, the Joint Health and Safety team did a good job in uh, fulfilling the requirement and presenting a policy that um, fulfills everything uh, to do good governance and uh, management support under the Act. Um, it provides the right breadth and depth um, to fulfill our needs. Um, and any questions regarding the health and safety policy, I'd be glad to answer them. Okay, questions, Stuart, go ahead. Thanks, Mike. Through the chair, Aaron, it's probably a silly question, and I probably know the answer is yes, but I couldn't find it in the report. Is it fair to assume that the worker reps are already health and safety representatives? Well, the, the worker reps, um, we recently had um, our uh, worker rep um, who was uh, in the water resource analyst position leave the organization. Um, so we had a new um, employee join the committee. Um, she has completed the level one and she's working on level two right now. Okay. No, thank you for that. Just when I read it, all I seen was it had to be, you know, selected from from the working side, but I just assumed that they probably had the credentials already of, of a health and safety rep. So you answered that. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Anyone else with a question? Yes, Ian. Thank you through you. I have to find my microphone. Um, my question um, is uh, related to uh, our trucks that we have that often will um, go off site to uh, one of the locations that may not be listed. I'm thinking about going just to pick up a, a blade or a placement belt or just a service or a wear part. Um, how does our joint health and safety committee um, you know, review some of those vendors that, that our, our staff are going to um, in terms of, uh, you know, their health and safety, or if we have um, any concerns about maybe the parking lot, some of these locations, um, how does our, you know, the workplaces where I believe our workers are, and uh, if they're on the road and they're in a vehicle, uh, the workplace could very well extend to um, one of our business partners. I was just hoping for a comment on that. Uh, thank you uh, through you, Mr. Chair to uh, Ian. Um, so this is our policy and this is the high level. We do have a standard um, operate SOP manual and we're continually updating that. We're uh, one of the latest things that was at the last meeting was our uh, stopping on the side of the road procedure. Um, so we do have procedures for um, ticks working in the wild and all our different sites. Um, I can look into specifically going to um, vendors or off-site businesses um, to see if we ha do have a procedure for that. Okay, Ian, yep. anyone else with a question or a comment with respect to this health and safety report? No? Okay, we need a mover and a seconder for the motion that the LPRCA Board of Directors remove section 31 from the Long Point Region Conservation Authority personnel policy and that the LPRCA Board of Directors approves the Long Point Region Conservation Authority health and safety policy as presented. Mover? I'll move it. John Schultz is the mover. Seconded by Ian Rabbits. Okay, those in favor? That is carried unanimously, thank you. So we'll move on to the added item, which is number 9G. And I'm going to let uh, Peter introduce this subject as it was his, uh, he wanted it on the agenda package for discussion. Go ahead, Peter. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As I mentioned earlier, this came about as a discussion at Southwest Oxford Township Council yesterday. Um, it was suggested by the mayor that uh, in order to generate interest in the conservation authorities, that the authorities might want to place a, a handful of day passes at local libraries to be loaned out and returned to the library at the end of the use period uh, so that they could be uh, borrowed or loaned out again um, 
you know, in perpetuity throughout the, throughout the season, uh, just for day use in order to uh, generate some interest in the, in the conservation grounds. Um, I believe the same suggestion is going to be taken to Catfish Creek and also to the Upper Thames as well. So um, I'm open to the discussion. I just wanted to bring it to the board's attention and see if there's any appetite for something like this. Any uh, further discussion with respect to this item? That's brought up by Peter. Ian? Um, I'll bite. Thank you for uh, that suggestion, Peter. I think it's a, a great idea. Um, I know that uh, board member Michelle uh, is currently serving um, on the, uh, on the uh, Norfolk County Public Library uh, board uh, where I previously served. So maybe it would be uh, if we could engage, uh, to see what their appetite is uh, for the passes. But I think it's a, it's a wonderful idea. Um, I'm not too sure if uh, we need a formal recommendation from, from the board uh, to do so, if staff could take it as direction, but it would be something I would support. Okay, any further input on this item? Tom? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I also would agree that I, I think this is a good idea and it's certainly something I, that is worth trying. Uh, and uh, if the board uh, is so inclined, I would be happy to, uh, to raise this at the next Norfolk County Public Library Board meeting. Okay, next I will ask, is there anybody opposed to this idea? Doesn't look like anybody's opposed. I was there. And uh, John Shelton has a question. Peter, uh, how many passes are you talking about? Half a dozen? I think that would depend, uh, Mr. Vice Chair, on uh, how many libraries we're going to put them into. Um, what I don't have is any idea of what this would cost the authority in terms of lost revenue from the from the sale of those passes. So um, that might be something we want to study before we jump into this with both feet um, to determine if we're talking one or two per library, or are we talking a half a dozen per library, or and also how many libraries are we wanting to cover? Uh, for instance, in Southwest Oxford, we have um, Brownsville and uh, Mount Elgin that would uh, probably be interested. Uh, then, of course, there's uh, the one in Tilsonburg. Uh, uh, Board Member Barris can speak to that one, but I think that would probably be a good target as well. And then Norfolk County obviously has a number of different libraries, so this could get you know pricey in a hurry if we if we run away with it. Peter, you mentioned the word study that maybe we should put some study to this. So uh, uh, perhaps we should get Judy to chime in here. I, perhaps we need a staff report for the next meeting to come forward. Would that be in order, Judy? Um, sure. I know in Norfolk, there are five libraries in Norfolk and I know uh, Bayham has some. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Judy. Um, sure, we can take a look at it. Uh, I can speak to Brandon and Zach, toss around some ideas. Um, I think there's some other programs like this for mm -hmm. maybe not for conservation authority um, to enter parks and things, but I think there are lo other loaning programs. So I think we can look to see how they're doing it, especially during COVID. Uh, maybe it's done more electronically. I'm not sure. So um, yeah, definitely a good idea. It's just how could we implement it and how far reaching would we go? But we can take a look at the libraries across the whole watershed, actually. Okay, I'm going to go to Valerie and then Aaron. Yeah, thank, yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, through the province, they have day passes through the week, but not for weekends. So I think that's the other area that you have to look at. It's not going to be day passes for the weekend, I would think. Um, I know that the library in Port Burwell usually got day passes for, I think, I can check, but I think it was just three passes. So I think you're going to have to look at a limit of how many you're going to mm -hmm. do if you're going to do this. Thank you. Right. Good point about the weekend thing. And Aaron, over to you. Yes, I was just going to mention, I'm aware of the program that was initiated this year for the London Public Library, and the province of Ontario donated um, 30 passes, which equated to about one for every 6,000 residents in the city of London. So that's kind of the measure for the province. 
And that program was free and it can re be renewed up to three times for a maximum of seven days. Um, and they did have, uh, there was no overdue billing. And if the park pass was lost, the borough had, borough had to pay $225 for it. That was the parameters under around the London Public Library program, which uh, started this year. Okay, thank you. Robert? Uh, just for everyone's information, uh, Brant County has one library system with uh, library uh, locations in St. George, Glen Morris, Paris, Burford, and Scotland. Uh, the services are uniform throughout all of the libraries, so you would, it, it, it's a complication that uh, uh, one library is in the watershed, but the library system is, is in the county, which uh, they, they like to provide services uniformly across all the libraries. So I don't know whether someone in Glen Morris would uh, take advantage of the, uh, uh, the service, but uh, that's just a, out there for discussion. Thank you. Anyone else with a comment? So perhaps uh, we can count on staff to give us a report for the next meeting in May. Peter, go ahead. Yeah, through you, Mr. Chair, to Robert, um, I think it would be uh, pertinent for us to restrict this to the libraries that are actually within the watershed. I mean, we can take this and run with it. Um, Oxford County also manages all the library system uniformly, um, but something like this, I think we'd have to restrict it because there's not, uh, I don't think we need to incur that kind of expense at the LPRCA. Robert? My point is that the library system uh, has uh, mission statements uh, galore about uni uniformity across all the libraries. So to uh, have the service in one library without it being universal presents a problem in the Brant County library system. I agree that it, it would not make sense to offer passes perhaps to uh, library patrons in Glen Morris or St. George, as opposed to patrons in Burford, but the patrons are supposed to be serviced uniformly across the library system as the mission statement of the library, being a former library board member. That's a good idea, but there is complications. Great. Is there anybody else with a comment on this uh, library day pass? No. Okay, so I guess what we'll leave it uh, to the general manager, Judy, if you could come back with a report as direction in, in May, would that be doable? Yes, that's direction? doable. Yep. We won't be looking at a motion right now, but just give you direction to come back with a report. Peter, go ahead. Go ahead, Peter. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Your sound is breaking up on me, so I couldn't hear your last comment. Um, would we be able to go back to the septic uh, tender once more? I know the tender is passed and that's fine. Um, I've just been doing a little bit of math here on the side. Would we be able to reopen that discussion for a moment? We can, but I, I take it that the motion's been passed, but go ahead. If you have a suggestion where we can save some money, maybe. Go ahead, Peter. I'm not, I'm not suggesting that we reopen the, the, the approved tender. That's fine. But when I do the math here, um, by Judy's numbers, the Norfolk uh, campground is uh, about 78% the size of the Haldeman campground. So if you take the Norfolk number of 19,600 as the estimated cost for septic disposal this year, um, and you multiply that by a factor of 1.25 to bring it to the equivalent of um, Haldeman, then you get a total for Norfolk of 24,500. Haldeman's estimate for this year is 54,910. And that's a difference between the two, even using a, an upgraded number for Norfolk, that's a difference of over $30,000 between the two um, at a comparable size. So um, I wonder if we can do some more investigation as to um, where we can generate some more savings at Haldeman, because it seems to me that we're spending significantly more uh, money for the same service there. Okay. Uh, um, any comment with respect to that, uh, Judy? Yeah, right. thank you. Um, through you, Mr. Chair, to Peter. Yeah, definitely we'll be looking to utilize our own septic system on site to the, to the maximum. And also, but in Haldeman, we do have people that stay um, 
they're more like, uh, I don't want to say residents, but they're, they stay through the week and weekends, whereas some of the other campgrounds, the use is different, right? So we do have a um, number of days that people are on site, probably heavier weighted at the Haldeman Park. Okay. So there's a few factors for the amount, but we're definitely looking to try to, to uh, minimize the cost there. Okay, that's good to hear. You're looking to minimize it. So maybe you can investigate that further, Robert. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Maybe someone has a better memory than I have, but I seem to recall Haldeman uh, services went really sky high a few years ago, and it was related to the disposal uh, serve site services or tipping fees or something to that effect. I, I forget, maybe Judy can remember, maybe Mike can remember, but it did uh, dramatically uh, uh, increase. And we've had this kind of discussion before, but I can't really recall the, the particulars, but I know Haldeman was a kind of a, an outlier for that reason. Yes, and, and Judy did mention that there have been some uh, improvements there to reduce that cost already. I think she said there was $90,000 one time just for Haldeman. But there was an infrastructure problem where rainwater was actually getting into the, the septic storage area. And that was corrected. But maybe there's something else that we should be looking at. I don't know. Yes, there's, we know that there's still some leakage, but um, yeah, definitely. And also, Robert, back in those days, we were not utilizing our own septic system on site. It was not functioning. So we have that functioning now. Okay, Peter. Good eye for that question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's just when I look at the numbers, $30,000 uh, buys a, a fair bit of improvement year over year as well. So um, mm -hmm. let's keep chipping away at it. But thanks for the explanation, Judy. I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Another uh, float trailer, I guess. Eh? <laughs> okay. That concludes our uh, meeting for tonight. There are no in-camera items. And uh, thank you, everybody, for sharing your evening with us. And stay safe during this uh, lockdown period. When do we actually go back to uh, to uh, what we've been used to of late? Is it what's the date anyway? Somebody said May something. May May fifth. May fifth. Okay. So that's our our next meeting will be virtual because that's our date of our meeting. I think. Yeah. Okay, so that's Wednesday, right? Wednesday, yeah. Okay, folks, have a good evening. Stay safe. Stay strong. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Short and sweet.